with Elizabeth, featuring Del Moore. of Elizabeth occurred the time she called Alvin down. I say she called him down because that's where he was, down at the office. If we hurry, we can catch Elizabeth before all the mix-ups start. Elizabeth, how are you today? <laughs> Can you decide which one to wear tonight? Got an idea? You're going to call someone. Who? Calvin. I wouldn't call him at the office, Elizabeth. He might be busy. <laughs> Hello. Hello, darling. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Are you busy? Oh, a little bit, but go ahead. What's on your mind? Which of these two dresses shall I wear tonight? Now, there's a fine question to ask me on the phone. I guess you're right. I should have sent you a telegram. <laughs> Elizabeth, have you flipped your pretty little wig? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I was just kidding. It's just that I'm so excited to have a, a date with my handsome husband, I can't make up my mind about the dresses. Seriously, which one shall I wear? You're forgetting that I can't see them. Well, they're hanging right there. Bye. I, no, really, the yellow or the blue? The yellow. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Bye. 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 What a gal. <laughs> Hello. Alvin, you were right about the blue. Okay, fine. Bye. Oh, Elizabeth, wait a minute. Don't hang up. Hey, Elizabeth. Alvin, don't yell like that. You made the dog bark. Well, I didn't want you to hang up. What time are you picking me up? Why should I pick you up? You have the car. But you have the car keys. Oh, well, there's another set in that jar in the kitchen. Look, pick me up at the office. I'll get out by 5. 4.30, right. I said 5. Yeah, but I know me. I have to think 4.30 to get there at 5. <laughs> Even then, I'll be a little late. I better think 4.15. Look, I took all of that into account. I don't get off until 5.30. So what time should I think? Bye, Elizabeth. <laughs> Honey, you were right about the yellow. Elizabeth, is that why you called me up? No, not, not really. I got to thinking, if you wouldn't mind walking a couple of extra blocks, I could meet you at the corner of 7th and Maple. Oh, you mean because of the traffic? Mm-hmm. Would you mind very much? Oh, of course not. 7th and Maple it is. Bye. <laughs> She's in the jar, 7th and Maple. <laughs> Hello? Elizabeth, those two streets don't cross. <laughs> two streets? Seventh and Maple, they parallel each other. They run the same way. Oh, <laughs> what's the matter with me? Isn't that silly? <laughs> it sure is. Uh, let's make it Eighth and Maple. <laughs> Elizabeth, doesn't it naturally follow that if Seventh and Maple run the same way, then Eighth and Maple would run the same way? Not necessarily. If Mr. Smith is knock kneed and Mr. Jones is bow-legged, they wouldn't run the same way. <laughs> Where are we meeting, Elizabeth? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. I know. You know where Wilshire Boulevard and 7th Street kind of do this? I can't see what you're doing, Elizabeth. Oh, where they cross? Yeah. And then the street kind of swoops around this way? Uh, Elizabeth, I'll meet you at the station. Goodbye. Gladys, would you remind me that I'm meeting my wife at 5.30 at the station? Hey, hello. Railroad radio, gas, or police? What are you talking about? Well, I'm meeting you at the station. I'm supposed to, and, and I, which one? All of them. Just keep going from one or the other until I catch up with you. Alvin, you don't have to be sarcastic. I won't call you again. I'm sorry, honey. Look, I'll meet you in front of the information booth at the railroad station. There's a parking lot there, and there's no traffic. Now, which dress are you going to wear so we can get that straight? I'll wear the yellow under the blue. All right, that's good. Now, you won't call me again, will you? No. 
Bye. Bye, Dad. <laughs> Hello, Elizabeth. You promise you won't get mad at me? All right. I wouldn't have called you except it's important. All right, all right. You promise you won't get mad. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Alvin, your all rights are edgy. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a man with edgy all rights. Never mind that. What's so important? What time did we say? 4.30. You said that you were going to think 4.15. I think I'll think 4.30. Elizabeth, hmm? I shall hang up on you at this point. Why? I'm coming home. We'll leave the house together. All right. Oh, and by the way, in spite of all this, I love you very much. Me too. Bye. Bye. Uh, Elizabeth, now wasn't that nice? <laughs> Incident number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred the time she was asked to go along on a Girl Scout outing as assistant troop leader. As I recall it, she was practicing on how to sit around a campfire. <laughs> Very pretty, dear. You're improving. Do you think so? Well, I thought I was just getting used to it. <laughs> I know what's wrong. Oh, really? I haven't been doing this. Oh. Wait till you see how much better this sounds. Listen, honey, honey, I don't want the neighbors to think I'm beating my wife. Alvin isn't beating me! But don't you think you ought to be studying up a little on first aid and stuff instead of doing that? After all, an assistant troop leader should know something besides two miserable notes on a harmonica. I'll ignore the nasty way you phrased that statement, Alvin. Here. What's this? Girl Scout handbook. Ask me any question in that book. Okay, we'll see how smart you are. Hey, I found a new note. You want me to help you with this? Sure, let's go. Okay. What are some of the out of doors rules? What page? 66. Mm, on a hike with your troop, be responsible for one of the following. Where to go, what to wear. Okay, you know that one. All right. <laughs> I have another question for you as soon as you're through howling at the moon. <laughs> howling at the moon, honey, that was oh, Susanna. How do you tell directions by the stars? Um, the page 264. Yes. Uh, at night, north of the equator, there is one constant compass point, the North Star or Polar Star. See page 256. It is. Hey, wait a compass. minute. You memorized this. I memorized the whole book. So, oh, let's try some questions without it. Well, why? Everything I need to know is in that book. <clears throat> Just the same. I'll give you some of my life saving questions left over from the old Army days. If you don't stick to the Girl Scout book, you're going to get some pretty silly answers. Never mind that. We'll take a hypothetical case. Now, there's a man drowning down at the beach. What do you do? Nothing. The man is yelling for help. He's drowning. I can't hear him. I'm home cooking dinner. <laughs> Let's start over again. Look, you can hear the man drowning because you are down at the beach, too. You're even wearing a bathing suit. Now, what do you do? Nothing. Why not? I can't swim. <laughs> you don't have to be so rough. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, let's forget the man down at the beach. Now... Why? He's in trouble. Oh, but you don't know it because you're home cooking dinner. Well, I know about it. Now, Alvin, we better get down. <laughs> Goodness sake. Well, all right, now here we are down at the beach. Now, what was your question? What do you do about the drowning man? Nothing. I got here too late. <laughs> Alvin's beating me! <laughs> okay, honey. I'll be good. No. Now, ask me some more questions. No. Okay, I'll play one more chorus of Oh, Susanna. You win. But, honey, please, will you stop clowning around? Okay. All right. Now, let's say that I have a broken toe. What do you do about it? 
Put it, Miss Flynn. First sensible thing you've said all night. I'll go get my first aid kit. You put your foot up. <laughs> this ought to be good. Here we go. Now. What are you doing? Got to find out how to open the first aid kit. <laughs> Just a minute, honey. Now, the first thing we do, you see, is we split the leg like this. <laughs> this, and then around up here. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. I said that my toe is broken, Elizabeth. Well, I, I only have leg splints, honey. That'll keep you off that toe for a while. Now, the next thing to do is entertain the patient while he's in that helpless condition. <laughs> Have you ever thought of using that thing as an anesthetic? Uh, no, but I'll play you one chorus of Anna Souza. That's so Susanna spelled backwards. <laughs> Wait a minute. I have one more question. Hmm. How do you treat a broken jaw? Alvin, you wouldn't dare. Answer the question. I don't even think that's in the book. Good. Get up. I'll show you. Come on. <laughs> Stand up. Come on. Ah, sure. Put your hands behind you like this. Yep, we tie the patient's hands back here so they won't interfere with the treatment. Hold still. Broken jaw, is that 117? Mm, here we are. Now, we turn around like Page so. Oh, I'll need something to hold the mouth open. Hold it open. There you are, like that. Now, we take this and splint the head right over the top, see? There we are. Come, come. There we are. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> Bye, honey. <laughs> Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth occurred the night she almost cost the census taker his senses. Well, he wasn't a census taker exactly. He, he was taking a survey. No, that would make him a surveyor. Uh, let's go back a year or two and see for ourselves. Don't be alarmed. Alvin's in the den and Elizabeth's out walking the dogs. Ah, here she is now. The big fellow is Stormy. He lives here. The little guy is Bandy. He belongs to Mama. Elizabeth and Alvin are sort of uh, dog sitting while Mama's down at the neighborhood show. Alvin! Oh, hi, honey. Here, let me take Stormy. Will you, honey? Yeah, hi, boy. Nice walk. Come on. Come on, Stormy. Come on. 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 When's your mother due back from the movie? I think she said another couple of hours, honey. Hey, doesn't it strike you as kind of odd that she'd come to visit us and spend the entire evening in a movie? <laughs> this is the only place she can get good popcorn. <laughs> hey, if that's supposed to be a funny joke, I don't have time to laugh. I'm watching the Harry Ratbone show. Come on, honey. Be right there. You see that. I can see. Stay right there, honey. Hello? Oh, how do you do? I'm conducting a house-to-house -house survey in this area. You see? And uh, you, you wouldn't want me to come in and ask you a few questions. <laughs> uh, thank you anyway. Goodbye. And thanks for opening the door. Uh, well, wait, wait a minute. We're very interested in surveys around this house. Come on in. I'll call my husband. <laughs> Alvin? Uh, you see, we're, we're setting about to get the population and the type of dogs... Alvin! And, and I'm sorry, you were saying... Well, I'm, I'm conducting this survey for my magazine to determine the canine population... Honey, we have company. <laughs> Come on in, sit down. Thank you. A minute ago, you thanked me for... for uh, Come on, sit down. For opening the door. You mean to tell me a lot of people don't open the door when you ring? Well, they, they look through those little peepholes. I usually carry on a conversation with an eyeball. <laughs> uh, do, do you have a dog? Yes, but tell me more about the survey. Well, Mr. Sylvester is the editor of our magazine. Do you know him? 
Is he's in the other room watching the Harry Ratbone show? He is. Oh, good. I'll get him. Hey, I thought you were going to... Who killed him? Honey, he's making some kind of a survey. I, I'm not sure. I think it's psychological. Oh. Well, Mr. Sylvester, this is a pleasant surprise. I've worked for you, but I've never had the pleasure of making your acquaintance your sanctum sanctorum being what it is. Not what? <laughs> Don't worry about it, honey. It hardly shows. I'm the one that wrote your slogan for the magazine. What slogan? Let's all dog it together? <laughs> well, I'm afraid there's been a slight case of mistaken identity here. Sure has. <laughs> oh, I, I see. Well, that's pretty stupid of me. I'm sorry. This is my husband, Alvin. This isn't your boss. <laughs> well, how do you do? Hi. How about a raise? No, you don't understand. This isn't your Mr. Sylvester. Oh, well, I know, but if you'll give me a raise, I'll quit Mr. Sylvester. <laughs> get the net, get the net. Uh, Alvin. Let, let's get back to the survey. Do you want to use the desk? Oh, very well. <laughs> you don't need me for this, honey. I have a cold. I'm going to go in the other room for a while. Honey, you'll need us both to answer the questions. Go and get a chair. Now, these questions may sound a little unorthodox to you, but, but that's the whole point of this survey. You know, anybody can ask ordinary questions. I told you it was psychological, darling. <laughs> My name is Fred. <laughs> me, she wouldn't call you darling after all. What do you want to know about it? Well, I don't want to know anything about you, but you, you have a, a third party staying here? Oh, Mama? But she's only visiting us. Well, that doesn't make any difference. You see, we'll put her down anyway. Ma, ma. <laughs> Male or female? Get the man. He said they'd be unorthodox questions, sweetheart. <laughs> My name is Fred. <laughs> you won't need me to answer questions about Mama. I'll be in the other room. Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, don't forget about the raise. <laughs> nice fella. He is. Go on, this is fascinating. Well, now, what's her lineage? <laughs> well, Mama's Scotch, Irish, a uh, little German, maybe. Yeah. Scotch, Terrier, Irish, Setter, possible German Shepherd. Does she sit up? <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, she sits up with Papa whenever he's sick. Yeah, I see. So. Uh, does she bark at people? <laughs> Only at Papa. <laughs> Barks at Papa. Uh, has she ever seen a vet? Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, Papa's a vet himself. He was in World War I. <laughs> These are very odd answers. You don't want to fool with the officials, you know. <laughs> odd questions, odd answers. Go on. Uh, what kind of dog food does she prefer? Mama doesn't eat dog food. <laughs> scraps from the table? Oh, Mama scraps from any place. <laughs> <laughs> Fighter. Uh, now, what kind of coat does she have? Rabbit. Well, you, you mean it looks like rabbit fur. Yeah. It has silk lining and has uh, the big pockets. <laughs> Lady, we're not discussing a kangaroo. I'm sorry. I'm entitled to one wrong answer. <laughs> Does she sleep in a doghouse or on the back porch? No answer. Uh, Does she howl at the moon? There seems to be something wrong here. Does she knock furniture over when she wags her tail? Alvin? Does she? Does she? Alvin? What's the matter? You stay here. I'll get the net. Wait. What have you been saying to my wife? We were just discussing your dog Mama when she got hysterical. And now I bid you goodbye. It's safer for me to talk to eyeballs. Your dog? Yeah. I, I thought we were discussing my mother. Your mother? <laughs> oh, no wonder I acted I... so silly. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> well, we do have a dog if you want to finish the survey. Well, sure, let's. <laughs> <laughs> Now, is it thoroughly understood that we're talking about dogs? Of course. Uh, why don't you go put on some coffee, darling? 
I'd love to, but I have to write out this story. <laughs> she was talking to me. I'll be right back. I'll go get Stormy's papers. Well, if I'd noticed you before, we wouldn't have had all that. You such a sweet little puppy. Here they are. <laughs> now. <laughs> what do you want to know about Stormy? Well, we'll we'll skip all the obvious questions and see. Uh, how much does he eat? Oh, I'd say about two and a half pounds of meat a day. <laughs> Glutton. Well, how are we doing? Did you tell him how Stormy can sit up and roll over? And I's always stealing food off of the top of the refrigerator? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Acrobat. <laughs> uh, what's his lineage? Well, it's all right here. His father was a champion, St. Bernard. <laughs> how do you account for his size? Well, you're the dog expert. You tell us. <laughs> well, his mother must have been a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right, friend. <laughs> so, uh, how much does your dog weigh? Oh, I'd say about 165 pounds, wouldn't you? Honey? Oh, honey, about 175. We're talking about Stormy, not Mama. I know that. Mama weighs 240. <laughs> what do you say? Mama does weigh 240, doesn't she? Oh, sure. Where are you going, Fred? That little dog does not weigh 175 pounds, nor does he steal food from off the top of the refrigerator, nor was his father a champion St. Bernard, nor was Look, his... would you stop gnawing for a minute and listen? <laughs> this is Bambi, Mama's dog. This isn't Stormy. Stormy's out in the backyard. <laughs> oh, well, what a crazy mixed-up afternoon this has been. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, why would we start this all over again? Well, pretend we don't know each other. That's a good idea, good. and then we don't get mixed up. You came oh, in the door, remember? Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hello. How do you do? I'm making a house-to-house -house survey. Do you have a dog, D-O-G, dog? Yes, yes, we do. We have a St. Bernard. Oh. <laughs> Alvin. Well, well, who well, killed him? What do you do, Mr. <laughs> Sylvester? No, you, you stay here. I'll get the oh, message. Oh, very good. This no, isn't Mr. Sylvester. This, this is Mr. Sylvester. Hey, I'm Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, everybody. No, they must have been I know. I think it's wonderful.